thank you all very, very much. Uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Rabbi. Uh, it's, uh, I want to thank the JCRC and Beth Shalom for welcoming us, for extending this invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here among so many friends this afternoon. And I appreciate this opportunity to speak with you uh, at this very challenging time uh, for Israel, uh, for Maryland's Jewish community, and for Jews across, all across the world. Uh, this is the first time that I stand before you as a candidate for the United States Senate. Uh, however, I'm no newcomer to this community. Uh, some of the people in this room have come to know me over the past decade as we work together to change Maryland for the better. From day one, I made it clear that there would be no place for anti-Semitism in the state of Maryland. We increased, as Ron said, or the rabbi said, I think Ron said, that we increased funding for security at schools and synagogues and child care centers that were at risk of hate crimes. We supported private schools, including Jewish schools all across the state by boosting, uh, funding the Boost Scholarship Program to help thousands of children uh, be, uh, attend the school of their choice because I believe that uh, every child in Maryland deserves a world-class education regardless of what community they happen to grow up in. Our Boost Scholarship Program helped uh, make that vision a reality for thousands of children all across the state. And when uh, the county executive here in Montgomery County ordered the private schools, including all the Jewish schools, to close, uh, we immediately responded and took a stand for common sense, demanding that these schools should have the right to make that determination for themselves. Uh, for eight years, we worked tirelessly together with you to strengthen our already strong relationship with Israel. And as Ron said, one of my very first trade missions uh, as governor was to Israel. Iran and some of you accompanied us on that trip. We had a great uh, visit. I know Rona Kramer, who was my cabinet secretary in our administration, was on that trip with us as well. Rona, thank you for all of your hard work with the eight years of our administration. It's amazing. Um, I'll never forget the incredibly moving experience as I was brought to tears laying a wreath at Yad Vashem mm -hmm. in remembrance of the six million Jewish victims of unspeakable acts of violence. We deepened our economic partnerships with Israeli businesses and universities, especially in the fields of cybersecurity, biotechnology, the life sciences and defense, including recruiting the Israeli company Elta, which uh, produced technology for the Iron Dome uh, to locate its North American headquarters here in the state of Maryland. We established a sister state relationship between Maryland and the Negev region, and we made it strongly and repeatedly clear that Maryland would stand steadfast in solidarity with Israel against the BDS movement. I was I was the first governor in America to sign an executive order prohibiting all executive state agencies and departments from entering into any contracts with any business unless that business certified that they would not engage in BDS. And I grieved with you after the tragedy at the Tree of Life shooting. Now, we've been through a lot together, and I've always been proud to uh, stand arm in arm with you but the challenges that we confront today are far greater than anything that we've faced over the past decade. This is a moment when our leaders must be held accountable for their words and their actions. There are times in history when leaders must stand up for what is right, regardless of party affiliation or their personal interests. I actually learned this at a young age from my dad, who was a congressman from Maryland, uh, who was on the House Judiciary Committee during the impeachment of Richard Nixon. 
He was the very uh, first Republican to come out for Nixon's impeachment. And uh, in, in recent years, I think you know that I've never hesitated or lacked the courage to stand up to my own party and to do the right thing for the country. I believe that the days and the months following the horrific attacks of October 7th were one of these critical moments that represent a time for choosing. Back in October, I was looking forward to doing two fellowships at Harvard University, one in the School of Public Health uh, on our nation-leading COVID response, uh, the other in the Kennedy School of Government to talk about how to fix the broken politics in America. You know, I'm a guy who struggled to work my way through Florida State University. So it was kind of a big deal. You know, I was, I was honored uh, to, to, to receive these fellowship opportunities at such a distinguished university. I actually asked them if they had checked my transcripts. <laughs> but I, I, I was very much looking forward to it. I was at the University of Chicago doing a fellowship at the time. Uh, but when I saw uh, the university refusing to condemn the protests, attempting to justify and celebrate Hamas terrorism, I stood up immediately and resigned from both of those fellowships. <laughs> Just after the greatest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, we saw demonstrations essentially blaming the innocent victims of the horrific attack who were murdered, kidnapped, and raped. And they were attacking the legitimacy of the world's only Jewish state and its right to defend itself. Jews have been harassed and made to feel unsafe in their schools and synagogues and everywhere they go. And these were not isolated incidents. Anti-Semitic incidents in the United States have risen by nearly 400%. We saw college presidents at some of our most prestigious universities in January uh, refusing to answer to Congress whether calling for the genocide of Jews violated their campus policies. The lessons of history are crystal clear. We must all take a stand in the face of genocidal acts. There's no, there's no both sides when it comes to the murder, rape, and kidnapping of innocent women and children. There's no room for justification or equivocation for calls to kill all the Jews. This is not a partisan issue. This isn't about the differences between the right and the left. This is about the difference between right and wrong. I have always had a great deal of respect for Senator Ben Carley, and I want to take a moment to recognize and thank him for his many years of service. You know, we may not have always agreed on every issue, but we always work together across the aisle as Team Maryland. And he should be commended for his consistent and strong support for Israel in the face of pressure from the loudest and angriest voices. And I want you to know that if I have the honor of becoming your next senator, and that is exactly the kind of leadership that you will continue to see from me. Sadly, this type of leadership has become far too rare in Washington. It's not what you're getting from Maryland's junior senator, mm -hmm. who has become one of the most hostile voices against Israel in the entire United States Senate. Just this week, he signed an outrageous letter 
urging President Biden to cut off aid to Israel. Both of my potential Democratic opponents in this race have demanded that Israel enact an immediate and uni unilateral ceasefire. And they've even compared Israel's actions of self-defense to the atrocities of October 7th. One of them was applauded by Kerr, whose national director said that he was, quote, happy to see the atrocities of October 7th, and whose Maryland director took to social media to glorify Hamas terrorists and to compare Israel to Nazi Germany. Look, of course, none of us wants to see death and suffering. We all want to see the violence come to an end. And the way to solve this humanitarian crisis and achieve a ceasefire is for Hamas leaders to immediately release every single one of those hostages. And then they should surrender and be held accountable for this Look, I recognize that there are politicians who will say and do anything to win an election. But I think you know that I'm not one of them. Uh, too many politicians are more interested in campaign slogans and sound bites rather than real solutions. Too many without the courage stand up and do the right thing. A couple of weeks ago, we saw a bipartisan package to secure the southern border and to support Israel and Ukraine and other key American allies fail because people were told to vote against a critical bill that they claimed to be for. And it made me frustrated enough that I knew I had to step up and try to do something about it. That was the moment when I decided to run for the United States Senate. You know, I don't need another title. I wasn't looking for a job. And I have no interest in being just another Washington politician who spends all their time arguing and never getting anything done. And I never will be one of them. But the chaos, divisiveness, and dysfunction in Washington creates chaos, divisiveness, and dysfunction around the world. Our allies, like Israel and Ukraine, still believe in America, but they worry that America is too divided to believe in itself. America needs to stand up for our allies and stand up to our enemies. And the best way to secure peace is through a strong America that supports its allies. The fight to support Israel and to confront this epidemic of anti-Semitism in our society has sadly only just begun. At this critical moment, Maryland needs a pro-Israel champion in the United States Senate. <laughs> who will stand up and fight for our closest and most important ally. If I have the honor of becoming your next senator, that is exactly what I will be, just like I was for eight years as your governor. Look, this isn't just your typical fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's more important than that. This is a fight for Maryland and for America's future. And that is a fight worth fighting. I'm running for the United States Senate, not to serve one party, but to fix the broken politics in Washington and to fight for Maryland. That's exactly what I did as your governor. And it's exactly how I will serve you in the United States Senate. Thank you so much for having me.